All right, in this lesson, we're going to talk about the most important equation in the study of life in the universe, and that is the Drake equation. So let's start with a little clip from the show The Big Bang Theory. You may be familiar, right? It's a super popular comedy show. And uh, here's a little clip about the Drake equation. So take a look and listen carefully. Oh, uh, really? Are you familiar with the Drake equation? The one that estimates the odds of making contact with extraterrestrials by calculating the product of an increasingly restrictive series of fractional values, such as those stars with planets, and those planets likely to develop life. N equals R times FP times NE times FL times FI times FC times L. <laughs> So uh, hopefully that made sense. I think with that, we can probably end the lesson. But um, uh, let me just say a few more words about the Drake equation. So so uh, as with most things on this show, that was a, actually a very accurate description of what the equation is. It's named after this guy, Frank Drake, who, um, in fact, there is his equation. He's not necessarily that angry all the time. He just is posing. See, here's a smiling picture. See, he's, if you pick whichever you want, smiling Frank or frowning Frank. Um, he was a director of um, SETI for a period of time. He's also a professor at Cornell, I think, before that. And uh, he came up with this equation. And, and the, the purpose of the equation, so, so you know, I should say SETI, right, is the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. And it's a nonprofit organization. And the whole point of the organization is to search for not just life in the universe, but to search for intelligent life in the universe. That is to try to initiate contact like two-way communication or at least one-way communication with other living intelligent life forms in the universe that's like the reason they exist and so the purpose of this equation was to estimate how many intelligent life forms should we expect there to be in our galaxy or in our universe right so some people might say well there's only one and that's humans but you might make the argument of saying, well, actually dolphins are pretty intelligent. So, so maybe they count. Okay. Maybe um, monkeys are pretty intelligent. Maybe they count. Okay. So we're talking about though, intelligent, intelligent, um, civilizations. So maybe, maybe, uh, dolphins and monkeys wouldn't count in that case. All right. So intelligent civilizations. So how does this equation work? We're going to look at it a few different ways. Basically, as Sheldon said, it is the, uh, a, a, we'll have to re-listen to it at the end to kind of review how he said it, right? But essentially what you do is you have a whole bunch of fractions and you multiply them all together to get what's left. So in other words, if only one out of every 10 stars has a planet around it, then you would put one tenth and you'd multiply that. So here's how it works. So N in the Drake equation here, N represents the number of civilizations in our galaxy that we could potentially communicate with, all right? So that value would equal, you start with the number of star, what does it say? The average rate of star formation per year in our galaxy. So basically how many new stars there are every year in our galaxy. And then, and then we multiply by all these fractions, the fraction of those stars that have planets. Well, first, first we should say, the star birth rate, or you could just say the number of stars in our galaxy, that's a number that we can estimate quite accurately. Okay, there are ways that we can estimate that, and that number, you know, we know is in the neighborhood of about 300 billion stars in our galaxy. The fraction of those stars that have planets is actually something we've now measured pretty well with a, with a space mission like Kepler. This has only very recently been something we could measure. Prior to that, we would just guess. So someone might guess, well, you know, 90% of stars have planets or only 10% of stars have planets. After that, the next fraction is the average number of planets that can potentially support life per star that has planets. So in this case, the average number of planets would be one in our solar system. There's only one planet that can support life out of all the planets in the solar system. In some solar systems, they might not have any, but in some solar systems, perhaps they have more than one. Okay, the next one after that would be the F sub E, the fraction of the above that actually go on to develop life at some point. So say you say you limit yourself only to the planets that could support life, and you just say, well, some fraction of those, um, we don't know what that fraction would be, actually do develop life. Now this is again a case where we've only know of one planet where this has happened, but you could 
guess at that value, you could say, well, one in a thousand Earth-like planets actually develop life, or one in ten thousand. Um, you could guess at that. Or some people, some some um, what 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 the SETI would call optimists would say, well, one, you know, a hundred percent, any planet that could support life will eventually have life. All right, and then the next one is the fraction of that that actually go on to develop intelligent life. So just because your planet has grass or amoebas doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have, you know, an intelligent dolphin, right, or an intelligent monkey. So that there's a fraction. So each one of these is like reducing the number down and down and down and down. And then the next one, the fraction of civilizations that develop a technology that releases detectable signals of their existence into space. Right, so on Earth, we developed an intelligent creatures, humans. God created humans, right? And then, but only a fraction of those civilizations developed technology that actually allowed them to communicate to space, right? Like think about the Mayans or, or Native Americans or any of these different civilizations throughout history, right? The Roman Empire, whoever it is, very intelligent civilizations, they did not have the technology to communicate into space. And so you could imagine a planet that has human-like creatures that just never thought it was worth developing technology to communicate over long distances. That's entirely possible. And then the time, the last one, is the length of time for which such civilizations release detectable signals into space. So in this case, for Earth, about 50 years, we've been releasing television and, and various radio communications into space. Um, whether we'll continue for another 50 years, maybe like we use, you know, now we use like cable lines everywhere, right? For internet and stuff. So maybe we won't be using radio signals for our communication in 100 years. Who knows? Um, or it could be that, you know, a civilization develops somewhere and then it destroys itself in something like a, a nuclear holocaust, like our Cold War could have become, right? So it might be that civilizations just don't last very long. So these are the kind of questions that get asked when you do the Drake equation. Again, they're uncomfortable questions, and and really there are very few of these that can be measured. Um, really the only ones that can be measured are the first two. Everything after that are really just guesses. And that's where you get to have some fun, if you want, I guess. <clears throat> so here is an interactive version of the Drake equation where you can actually guess these values. And at the top, it actually will use some presets, either the original Drake equation or the lowest estimated values, optimistic estimates or skeptical estimates. So let's just go with the skeptical estimates, okay? How about that? So, um, so here we go. This is for our galaxy. We could say the number of new stars born each year, seven new stars, okay? There's a skeptical, I have no idea what the actual value should be. But let's just say at a minimum there's two new stars born every year. Okay, so I'm going below the skeptical value. Okay, the percentage of stars with planets, 34%. Now this is the one we can actually measure quite well. It says here at least 40% of sun-like stars appear to have planets. Um, so, and many more may exist undetected. So it's using 34%. Let's just say 30% just to be extra skeptical. Okay, so there's how many, how many uh, planets. All right, and then it says... Um, average number of habitable planets per solar system and it says there's a lot of debate around this number okay so the question is how many habitable planets are in a solar system our solar system has one um, but let's just say and here it's saying this is a pretty skeptical value I think this is 0 0.02 so that's like 50 one in one in 50 let's just make it one in a hundred oh, one in 50 is as low as it goes okay well, <clears throat> if that are the values we use, then here it says in just our Milky Way galaxy, there are 1.8 billion habitable planets. That is planets that would have liquid water on their surface. I mean, that is a huge number in our Milky Way galaxy. Of course, our Milky Way galaxy is huge. Now we get to the questions about life. Okay, Drake assumed it says all Earth-like planets develop organic life. So there's an example of someone who is very optimistic. He said any any planet that's like the Earth must have life develop. Well, I think that's perhaps less likely. We don't know, okay? But let's just be pessimistic here. So what's the chance? So let's just say one in a hundred. That's a very low estimate, okay? All right, now the next question here. 
this is again a very heavily debated question is if you have life on that planet what are the chances that there is intelligent life so what percent I don't know I again would go kind of low I, so let's go down to 10% okay well, let's go down let's just I want to make a point here so I'm gonna go all the way down to 1% okay so now we've got one in a hundred of these planets is there any life at all in one in a hundred of those planets let's have something really smart here <clears throat> okay now let's keep going down where are we at here oh I got a preview here okay 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 so civilization now we're at the chance percent chance that life can communicate across space I, I think 10% is pretty reasonable if you've got smart smart people there I think over time as technology develops it's likely they will get to a point where they but let's just again go pessimist let's say one in a hundred again okay so of the intelligent civilizations only one in a hundred will ever develop some sort of distant communication radio communication all right now how long will that civilization send signals into space I mean I don't know how long 50 years ago is when it started for us how long do you think that's going to continue for us uh, you know that's purely guesswork but let's say at least, let's just say, uh, oh, we'll be pessimistic, 20 years. We've exceeded that here on Earth. Let's say only 20 years. And the number of times a civilization could redevelop. So suppose we do completely destroy uh, our civilizations. How many times could that redevelop on the planet? Um, let's just say once, just for fun. All right, let's say one and done. Now, we've got all these constraints. We've been fairly pessimistic, all right? And using this equation, then, how many communicating civilizations in the galaxy would we expect? Ones that are capable of communicating. Zero, it says. Oh, I see. Okay, so we've got zero communicating civilizations in our galaxy. But then, if you consider all the galaxies we see in the universe, okay, you would have 180,000 communicating civilizations in the universe. 180,000 in the universe. This is with extremely pessimistic guesses. But now here's the deal about this equation, right? If any one of these numbers, any one of these numbers, like the percent chance that life can communicate across space, if that was zero, right? Well, it's not zero because we did it at least once on this planet, right? So if it was one in a trillion or, or um, you know, the percent that chance that a habitable planet develops life, if that is one in a trillion, like this only happened here on Earth, then the whole equation goes to zero or goes to one. There's only one in our in our galaxy, right? So the equation is great for making these kind of estimates, particularly if you're optimistic about a lot of these values. But if you really believe that there is only one planet that has life on it and only one planet that has intelligent civilizations, like if, if that's the assumption going in, then really the equation is kind of irrelevant. It doesn't make much of a difference. It is worth seeing, though, that um, if you use today's optimistic element, okay, let's just put on our hat for a second. Let's say we work at SETI and we think that there is without question intelligent life elsewhere in the universe and uh, it's our destiny to discover it and it's the most important discovery we're ever going to make. And we're optimistic about that. Then look at the values okay, that we have here and what, it, what would that estimate become then based on those optimistic assumptions? It would be that there are 72,000 communicating civilizations in our galaxy alone, which would suggest that even some of our nearby stars have communicating civilizations. And then in our universe, there would be 10 million billion of these communicating civilizations, right? Which is a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So this is an interesting, uh, interesting um, <clears throat> interactive. I'll share the link with, of, to this with you so that you can play with it with your own numbers um, just for fun. All right, so now that we've explored the Drake equation, let's revisit it one more time and see if we can understand it. And I tell you what, I think YouTube lets me even play it in slow motion. So I'll play it at half speed to see if you can understand everything that's being said. Oh, really? Are you familiar with the Drake equation? The one that estimates the odds of making contact with extraterrestrials by calculating the product of an increasingly restrictive series of fractional values, such as those stars of planets and those planets likely to develop life, n equals.
equals R times FP times NE times FL times FI times FC times L. It's pretty good. He left out a couple terms compared to the one we looked at, but nonetheless, pretty, pretty good description. All right, I'll plan on seeing you next time.